Good morning! It's Thursday the 30th of November 2017. Welcome along. It's very bright and very nice looking out there, but don't go out that door. It's cold, very cold. Is it the last day of November? Oh, it isn't it? Last day of November. Only 25 days to Christmas time. Oh, yes. Are you still saving up for my present? I do hope you are. Yeah, don't don't you dare go outside because... Oh, hang on, I can't, can't find my mask. Uh, don't go outside because it's far too cold this morning. I've already been outside to put my bin out. Or not put bin, put stuff in my bin. I don't like a lot of rubbish in the kitchen. You know, I've got a bin in the kitchen, but I don't like it to be full up with stuff. I always think I'm going to infect some part of the house with, I don't know, creepy crawlies that might might climb out of a broken egg or an empty tin or something like that. So as soon as I've got a few items in there, I take the bag and straight out to the bin. Can't have too much rubbish going around. Thank you. Uh, one thing I keep doing is waking up far too early at the moment. I don't know what's going on there. Uh, I was talking to uh, the lovely Wendy at the moment, who's managed to lose over two stone now on the Slimming World. Someone else has lost a lot of weight as well. I shall come on to... No, not me. No, no. It's not all about me. It's not all about someone else. Re information has received in my ears that someone else deserves congratulations this morning. And that's coming up in the next few moments here on United Kingdom Talk. Go nowhere. Go nowhere. Yeah, I'm waking up. But this morning, it was like five o'clock. Managed to get myself off again. And then uh, 7.30 in the morning, I woke up this morning. 7.30. I don't know why. Um, I was talking to Wendy, as I say, about it. We're wondering if it's the Harrods tea, because it is quite strong. On the other hand, I thought it was the Harrods tea a few days ago, so I stopped drinking that. I have some in the morning, some with lunch, and then I don't have any more of it. I then go on back onto the normal tea bags, thinking to myself that they are weaker than the other tea, and that's what's keeping me awake. Now, I haven't got much Harrods tea left. Maybe about two weeks worth. So I'll finish that and then go completely back onto the weaker uh, Waitrose Gold Blend tea bags and see if that makes any difference. Now, I don't feel tired. You know, I'm not sitting here, oh, oh, good morning. Oh, no one wants to see that anyway, do they? Who was it yesterday? Um, could have been Diane or Rosemary, one of the two. I think it was one of the... I can't remember who it was now yesterday. But someone says, uh, we like how you're so bright and cheery in the morning. Well, I am. You know, no one was... Just imagine if I started off like this. Oh, good morning. Oh, it's Thursday. I've just got out of bed. I'm really tired this morning. Oh, I thought I'd... I thought I'd just come on and talk to... I mean, who's, who's going to want to watch and listen to that? No! we got to be bouncy and happy at all times, dear. Bouncy and happy. Yes. <laughs> so I don't know what's keeping me up. Um, the other thing uh, Wendy suggested. Now, what was it else she said? She said, uh, hang on, I'll, I'll look. I can look back. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Was it the Harrods tea? She says it might be the weight loss. I've certainly got loads of energy now. I lost my two stone. I mean, loads more energy. I, run, I practically run up to that swimming pool in the morning. But it's the... I don't know why I'm waking up so early in the morning. It's just how it is. OK. Uh, lovely quiz last night. Now, talking talking of bouncing and happy, whatever I do, like, if it's a kind of show, I try and be bouncy and happy. Even if I'm a little bit down, sometimes I get really busy. And it's quite difficult... It's quite difficult to be bouncy and happy 24 hours a day if you're, like, doing some sort of show or something everywhere, whether it's this or the quiz or the karaoke. If it's, like, a show-type thing, sometimes it can be difficult, especially if you've got, like, things being thrown at you all, sort, all over the place. Now, while I'm sitting here talking to you, OK, I can see messages next to me there and next to me in front of me there but I don't look at them until it's time to read out the messages. Otherwise, as you well know, it can get very confusing for me and then you kind of lose the um, lose the whole flow of the thing. That's why I don't, I'm not on there all the time. Oh, hello you, hello you, hello you. Because otherwise we just lose the flow. Now that's easy sitting in here. 
okay? I can look straight at you because I'm talking to you, you see. I'm talking to you. I'm not going to read out all these little bits and pieces until it's time to do that, until we've had a bit of a chat. You know, think about it like when you're out somewhere. You know when you're having a conversation with someone, as I am with you now, and someone comes in, excuse, excuse me, excuse me like that, excuse me like that, and starts poking you. Not nice, is it? <laughs> no patience. That's why I wait. But in here, it's quite easy. When you're out somewhere, maybe doing a, especially with a karaoke. You're doing a karaoke. You might be trying to do something and there's someone waiting there to talk. Someone over there who's talking at you. Someone over there who's talking at that. And all the time, you've got to keep smiling and bouncing. Now, I do lose it sometimes. Not not my temper. I rarely, very rarely lose my temper. But I do lose the smile sometimes and the happiness if I'm trying to deal with many things at once. But once it's passed, it comes back again. Almost automatically. Almost automatically. My mate, my mate Ron says, he says, but it's all fake. You're not like this all the time. I, yes, I am, dear. Thank you very much. I finish this show and I go bouncing down the stairs for yet another cup of tea before I go to my swimming pool. Yes. Now, funnily enough, uh, last night, uh, the quiz last night, oh, very quiet last night. I had two teams. I managed to convince one other person to join in last night. Uh, so we had three teams and it was all right. It was a bit of a laugh, actually. I had a nice time in there. Um, but there was a, a, a group of four people came in at the end. And they said, do you do, is it every Wednesday? The quiz, I said, yes, it's half past eight every Wednesday. He said, oh, well, we'll come next week. We've just been to another one and it was it was a disaster. I said, well, there are not many people there. He said, yeah, there were people there, but it was just uh, the bloke doing it wasn't very good. I won't say where it was or anything like that because I did find out where it was and all that. I said, oh, well, you know, we all have our different ways of doing things. He was a bit too serious. Now, yes, I mean, there are, I was, funnily enough, I've just stopped being a member of a quiz master's Facebook group. I went on there and, you know, some of them are very bullshy. You know, I am the greatest quiz master of all time and this is how you do it. Nothing could be so much boring. If everyone was doing quizzes in the same way, then what, what, what's, how boring would that be? You know, is there some on there? Oh, some people, they do quizzes and why can't they just read the questions? Well, any dickhead can do that, can't they? Anyone can, anyone can pick up a list of questions and read them out. You've got to give something else. So imagine you're at my quiz night, okay? It's like this going on at the moment in front of you, but with questions, okay? I try and make it nice and easy going, and I think um, uh, we, we do get there. I think we do get there. Other people do it seriously. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. That's how they do it. But these people on the, on the quiz quiz masters or quiz hosts group on Facebook. Oh, what a bore. Some of them are really, but not all of them. Some of them are so full of themselves. Why don't you just let people to get on with it in their own way? Anyway, so they'd been somewhere and it was all a bit serious, apparently, and all a little bit um, not very well prepared. So they'd come, just come out afterwards for a drink with me. And they said, that's not the worst one we've been to. I said, go on, you know. I'm all ears. I'm all ears. They went to a quiz night once. Well, apparently the quiz master was having some sort of breakdown and he's reading the questions out. This is where we're coming back to the happiness. It's all it's all it's all integral in in this little subject that we've started talking about this morning. Um, uh, 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 and he was reading the questions and then started go on the microphone going on about his ex-wife and how she'd left him and all this. This is all in the quiz. You can't do that. You can't do that for a bit of attention or un just because you're unhappy. If you're doing a show, you cannot show that to people. When I had the depression, OK, which I haven't had now for a year and a half. OK, uh, I'm going back at uh, 19, 19, 1990, 19. I don't know when it started, about 19, 1982, 1983, something like that. It was a long time I had it, years and years and years. Anyway, when I had that. And I used to do this uh, Monday night at the Black Cap, okay? 70s and 80s music. It was fantastic. It was packed. It was packed. That's when I was a DJ. 
absolutely packed. You could not get a cigarette paper in between the people. If you were down one end of the club and you wanted to go to the toilet at the other end, you would have to leave 20 minutes before you know, <laughs> to get to the toilet. It was that busy. Fantastic night. And I used to finish it and they all used to go home and I'd get in my car and cry on the way home. Don't know why. Funny, isn't it? But I didn't do it in front of the people. That's what you have to do when you're doing this job. And that's the whole happiness thing as well. I'm fine at the moment. I'm, I'm no depression since I saw that woman a couple of years ago. You know, the, the old uh, psychiatrist woman. She was very good, actually. They just sit there and listen. And it didn't come back since. At this moment in time, on a scale of one to ten, I'm about nine and three quarters. I don't know why that is. It, it picked up uh, really highly uh, a few weeks ago, actually. I think my mate thinks it's something to do with the weight loss as well. I think if you're, if you're fat and overweight, that's fine. That's fine. Sorry, I've got that wrong. If you're fat and overweight and happy, that's fine. If you're happy with that, that's fine. No problem at all. If you're not, it can really drag you down. And I think that's part of my um, my whole happiness thing at the moment. I don't know if you're the same. You know, have you lost a bit of weight? And has it really lifted your mood? It'd be interesting uh, to hear that. All right. So uh, that's the whole thing from last night. Nice quiz. And uh, they're coming back next week. They enjoyed how I did it. It's very, very lighthearted how I do the quiz. I noticed a dreadful traffic in and out last night. Oh, God. Let me tell you. Last night, to get there, to get to work, two hours and five minutes, sitting in traffic, uh, 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 inching, uh, 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 inching along, did the quiz, which lasts two hours. Coming home, road works all over the place. We're talking at midnight road works everywhere and it took me an hour and 45 minutes to get home now i can just about put up with it on the way to work coming back oh come on 12 o'clock at night and they're digging up the bloody road all over the place how annoying is that it just goes on and on the traffic and in a way this particular job I'm doing at the moment finishes around Christmas time. I don't have an exact date. It might go on a bit better, a bit further, but it, it might not. You know, and in a way, I'm thinking, oh, you know what? That's probably the best thing after all now. I, I shall miss, if I don't get another quiz somewhere, I will really miss doing it because I do enjoy doing quizzes, walking around, reading the questions and uh, uh, generally interacting and chatting to people. It's nice to chat to people, including yourselves, of course. Right, let's read some of your message out this morning. Uh, good morning to Wendy. Oh, there she is, Wendy there, who gets the first message in this morning. Total loss now, over two stone in weight. Congratulations, Wendy. Good morning, Diane. Ray Reynolds is there. Good morning and thank you so much for all the birthday greetings. We haven't done them yet, Ray. What do you mean, thank you for the birthday greetings? We haven't done them yet. I think you're jumping the gun a bit, Ray. Hold on. Hold on to your love. Lovely song by Jimmy Ruffin, incidentally, boys and girls. Good morning, Rob. Robbie Stedman. Morning, Robbie. Um, Good morning, Mary. Non-Irish Mary from Ireland is with us this morning. Good morning, Mary. Uh, good morning to Ashley, who pops in and says, uh, good morning. Good morning, Ashley. Are you at work today? Ashley delivers potatoes to chip shops and things like that. Blooming hard work it is as well. He often pops into a central station in Wharfdale Road in King's Cross. And um, he's knackered, absolutely knackered sometimes. Sometimes he comes in all dressed nicely in a little pressed grey tracksuit. And other times he just comes in dirty. You come in as you want, Ashley. You're always very welcome, dear. Oh, but don't stand in the way when I'm trying to put stuff away, for God's sake. He's got this habit of, of as soon as I finish, he comes on the stage and gets in the bloody way while I'm trying to put stuff away. One day someone will trip over a wire and die. I don't want that to be you, Ashley. I mean that in a caring way. A caring way. Caring. Caring. Good morning to Richard Leadon in Australia. Good morning, Richard. Uh, Ray Belasco. Good morning, Ray. Are you off today in Stanmore? Are you off? Ray works at Morrison's at the bread and cake counter in Queensbury. If you're ever in there, then please ask for Ray and say hello to him because he's a nice chap, Ray. He dances to tragedy as well, doesn't he? Da -da -da -da. 
Good morning, Oliver. Morning, Oliver. Uh, hello to John Malone in Ireland this morning, and that's from Oliver. Good morning, Joe Malone. John Malone. Uh, Mal Mal it is Malone, isn't it? Malone, yeah. I thought it was Malone then. I, di I didn't see the E on the end. Good morning, John Malone in Ireland. What part of Ireland are you from, sir? There's somewhere I haven't visited yet. Ireland. I absolutely have to go to Ireland. Uh, Ray says the Morrison's tea bags are good. I haven't tried those yet. Uh, good morning to uh, Zohir in Algeria. Um, yeah, well, Ashley, you made me lose my smile, dear. You come up on the bloody stage and you stand in front of me while I'm trying, and you move forward, and I can't get to the stuff. You know, there's a rope going on that stage because of this now, don't you? There is. They're putting a rope on the stage so when when I finish, I can pull the rope across and no one can come up while I'm trying to put stuff away. It's very very annoying. Uh, I have an Irish name. Yes, Oliver Reardon. Uh, my nan. Uh, was married twice, um, not because she fell out of love with someone. One husband died, and then there was a, a gap, and then um, and she got married again. So I'm a Reardon. My nan was from Ireland. Uh, she was a Ryan. She was a Ryan. Uh, she she became a no. She wasn't a Ryan. She wasn't born a Ryan. She was a Reardon, and then she was a Ryan, and uh, she was from County Cork. My nan. So yes, there is a bit of an uh, bit of Irish in me. Not at the moment, but uh, there might be later. Uh, Parasabo. Good morning from Indonesia to Parasabo, who's often with us uh, in the morning. What's one of my favourite quiz questions? Uh, Christina says, oh, I don't know, really. Uh, my favourite round, I think, is the music round. Are quite oh, no. No, I did a round the other week. Oh, it's a bit sick, really. It's a, it's a bit sick. The round was dead or alive. And basically, I rang, read out a list of names, you know, uh, I don't know the Queen Mother. Uh, Jeremy Corbyn and all that. And they had to say dead or alive. Dead or alive, Jeremy Corbyn. Dead or alive, the Queen Mother. So I read the 10 questions. Then uh, I read out the answers and they mark them. Uh, the Queen Mother, dead. Like that I say, dead. <laughs> we love the Queen Mother. We love the Queen Mother. But she's dead. And that's it. I quite enjoyed reading out that for some strange, sick reason. <laughs> oh, good morning to Amy. Good morning, Amy, who's in America this morning. Good morning, Amy. What part of America are you in, my darling? I'll go through all the messages now as quickly as I can. OK, my loves. Um, it's 4 a.m. Uh, you're up early, aren't you, Amy? I was up early this morning, 7.30. I got up. I mean, I mean, I say that's early. It's not early for a lot of you who have got um, normal sort of daytime jobs, is it really? 7.30 in the morning, but for me it's early and I keep waking up early at the moment. Not tired, as I say, but just uh, early. Okay, Oliver. Um, Joe is from Roscommon. I don't know where that is, Roscommon. What, uh, what county is that in? Don't know that. Uh, Amy, you need to be a little bit more patient, darling. I can't read them all out at the same time. I go for a list. If you look where you are on the list, I read your name out when we got to it, my darling, all right? Alabama, she's a nurse at work. Oh, okay. Oh, you're looking after those sick people there, are you, Amy? You look after them. Give them all kisses from me. All right. So let's go over to the uh, other other um, uh, other platforms. Good morning to Brendan Brady, who's with us on uh, YouTube this morning. Good morning to you, sir. Good morning to Ross Herndon. Uh, Abby's Abu's on Periscope. We've got, uh, let's have a look, uh, Capital Tires on Twitch, I think, who says, I now look thin. Thank you. I've reached my target. I've reached my target. I don't think you've been with us for a couple of days, have you? So you've missed the show, dear. You've missed the show. If you miss any of the shows, they're always available on recordings. You can either see those on my Facebook, facebook.com forward slash Chris Reed in UK. Okay, facebook.com forward slash Chris Reed in UK or youtube.com forward slash Chris Reed in UK. And there, if you ever miss it, there's normally a show almost every day, really, every day, in fact. Uh, and you can go on there and watch the recording if uh, if uh, if you miss them, okay? Don't forget, gang, we don't do a scheduled time. They can appear at any time. You need to get notifications. I only know two ways of getting the notifications. Either on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash Chris Reardon UK. Click the 
follow button or something like that. And then every time I'm live, you should get some sort of notification when we're on. And with YouTube, if you subscribe on YouTube, I believe that method is you get an email whenever there's a live show happening. I think that's correct. Perhaps Brendan Brady fan can pick me up on that one, okay? And a good morning to Estiche on Periscope as well. Um, Amy says, how are the British accepting Prince Harry's fiance? Oh, that's okay. Yeah, I don't see why she should have to convert from Catholicism uh, to Church of England. What with me being a Catholic anyway, you see, dear? You know, why does she have to go and do a pretend church, dear? The Church of England. Have you ever been in a Church of England during the daytime? There's no one in there, dear. Why has she had to convert? <laughs> so, yes, we're, we're quite happy, that is. We're, we're quite happy with that, Olivia. Uh, Amy, you're right, sweetheart. You must be very busy. Uh, yes, Capital Tires says, I missed them, and now your weight has gone from your face. You notice it first around your neck. I look like... I, here, look. You know those dinosaurs, the... Is it pterod pterodactyls? Look, watch this. I can do an impression of a dinosaur. Watch my neck. <laughs> that's, that's, that's an impression of a dinosaur. I do hope there's no extra charge for watching that. All right. Uh, Amy says she loves the royals as well. Yes, I do. I'm a big, big fan of the Royals. OK, now uh, let's have a look. There's an, yet another Windows update. Last night, as I shut down the computer at, uh, at, uh, at the quiz I was doing at the King's Head Theatre Bar, it said Windows update. Do you want to install now? And of course, I clicked no straight away. Close the thing down. And I brought it home and I thought, well, I'll do it. I got home after sitting all the traffic on the way home. And uh, switched on the computer. I thought I'd do that now while I do my dinner. So I put some stuff under the grill and put some baked beans in the um, in the thing there. And started it off. I turned it on and started its thing. And anyway, let, let it run with its update. It was downloading. So I got my dinner, went in the living room, watched about an hour's worth of television. Uh, the celebrity thing I was watching again. Celebrity jungle. I'm a maggot. Please eat me. That thing. Uh, I'm afraid I'm losing interest in that now because Amir Khan is hardly doing anything, rather disappointingly. I'm only really watching it to look at the gorgeousness of Amir Khan, who I think is stunningly good looking, right? But since Ian Lee went in it, he's kind of taken over. And I, I, he's just, I just I cannot relate to him at all. He's just horrible. He's... Oh, I don't know. I don't know. It's just just a personal thing, I think, really. That doesn't mean he's good. At, he's not good at what he does. It's just for me, he's not in my cup of tea. He really isn't. And like I said on the show yesterday, he looks like he could have a bloody good shave and a wash. How can you just be on telly like that? I know they're in the jungle. They must have a shower or something somewhere. And uh, Ian Lee has kind of taken over a bit, and it's not for me. So I think I'm going to stop series record. Well, I should really keep it going and you know, flick through it in case there's any really good shots of a mere car for me to gawp at. <laughs> like that. <laughs> so I'm losing interest in uh, the, the whole jungle thing. Um, who's, what's that programme at the end? I haven't watched it yet. But I think on ITV, and I'm not going to, ITV2, I think, afterwards, do like a talk about the jungle thing. And at the end of the jungle thing on ITV1, it says, right, let's go and talk to Joe and see what's in the chat room afterwards or something like that. And Joe Swash comes on. What an annoying little man that is. Oh, he's jumping around all over the place and screaming and shouting. What an annoying person Joe Swash is. Was he in EastEnders? I think he was in EastEnders or something like that. So we're losing interest in the whole jungle thing, I'm afraid. Uh, can't see me watching that for much longer. So I watched about an hour of that, had my dinner. Then I went back outside. This computer is still doing its update. That must about be about the millionth update since the beginning of September. Every other day, there's another massive Windows update. Not a little one. One that goes on for hours. So I went back in the room for half an hour, played a bit on the piano, went back in the kitchen, and it's it's like 0% is now applying updates or something like that. I went to bed, got up in the morning, and it had finished. So it was another one that has taken several hours to do. 
endless updates on uh, not just Windows, but Apple as well. Every time I turn on the phone, there seems to be another iOS update. They're obviously not checking these things out properly before they release them, are they? Very, oh, sorry, very, very annoying. Um, uh, yes, Brendan Brady says on my YouTube, we get an email and notification on the iPhone or iPad logged in. Is that through YouTube? You get a notification on your phone from new YouTube, do you? Or is that from Facebook, uh, Brendan? I'd be interested to hear that. Don't forget, this uh, program is available on Facebook and Periscope and YouTube and Twitch and, and, and Vaughan Live. I think it's Vaughan Live. They don't like me on there, Vaughan Live. Oh, the homophobic abuse I have her on there. I love it. <laughs> but I never read out their messages, you see. That's the secret to dealing with any sort of abuse, online abuse. You ignore it. You completely ignore it. Do not respond to any of it because that's what they want. Just a little bit of response there, okay? Uh, good morning to Estish, who's uh, watching on Periscope this morning. All right, my love. Uh, Ashley's off to work. Bye-bye, Ashley. Uh, Ray says, have you been watching the dancing? No, don't watch the dancing. Never really got into that. I have sort of turned it on, on before, while I'm getting ready for work on a Saturday night and looked it. And I think it looks good. I, I can't see anything wrong with it. It's just not for me. I love all the sparkly and all that. It's all wonderful, but not not really my sort of thing, the dancing. Yeah, OK. All right. Um, Ray likes the Queen as well, so that's nice. That's nice as well. Let's have a look there. Good. So that was that, uh, the Windows update. What else have I got here to tell you? Congratulations to Adam the Plumber, who's lost seven and a half pounds this week. Wow. Slim as well, but... A little bit of a cheat there. He's had food poisoning. Okay? So there, <laughs> there is the secret to losing a lot of weight very quickly. And thank you, those of you that have taken the time and trouble, incidentally, to share my show to your Facebook walls this morning. It's always very much appreciated. Adam's lost seven and a half pounds this week, but he has had food poisoning. So there's that's the thing to do. That's what to do. What you've got to do is take some burgers are a good way of getting food poisoning. Burgers, fish and chicken. Take some burgers out of the freezer, put them somewhere nice and warm, leave them for three days until the mould is growing on top, and then eat them raw. Guarantee you, you'll lose at least five pounds in a few days. OK, here I am, always willing to help. <laughs> Congratulations to Adam. Seven and a half pounds he's lost in a week. Well done. That's with Slimming World. If you're fat and you're not happy, do something about it. I highly recommend Slimming World. It works. I'm the proof. I'm the proof sitting here. It works. Not hungry. Get enough sized portions. It's what you eat and how you cook it. Slimming World. Highly recommended. OK, uh, I think I think I'm not 100 percent. I don't know if any of you have done Weight Watchers. But their meals always look a bit small to me. You know, the Slimming World meals are not small. They're big meals. Big meals they are. Oh, I can barely move now. I've had this morning uh, overnight oats which I like very much. Look it up on the internet. Overnight, how to make overnight oats. You'll need a jar, some fat-free yogurt, some oats, and some sort of berries. I use blueberries. You can use strawberries, grapes, chopped up apple, anything like that. Put it in a little jar, leave it overnight. In the morning, stir it all up and eat it. Oh, it's delicious. Delicious. Ah, oh, Brendy. Brendan says uh, it's definitely from YouTube. It comes up at the top of the screen. Uh, because I'm logged onto the app. So there you go. You can uh, you can get us on YouTube as well. YouTube.com forward slash Chris Weird in the UK. And of course, I get the messages up the same as I do with the Facebook messages. Okie doke. Um, well, open a phone line as well. If you want to call in. that uh, It's already open. Okay, phone line's open there. Uh, you'll notice I've got the Skype name as well up there now, boys and girls. If you want to Skype in, it's Skype United Kingdom Talk. All one word, United Kingdom Talk on the Skype. Or you can phone in, local London number 020 8144 347. 020 8144 347. Uh, I have been going through my Facebook groups recently and coming off a lot of them. I noticed I, I seem to be a member of loads and loads of Facebook groups. Now, when I do this show, okay, I, I share it to different certain Facebook groups, uh, Learn English groups. So if you're with one of the Learn English groups, 
and you're watching this morning, perhaps for the first time, a very warm welcome along to you. We just sit here most mornings, have a little bit of a chat with each other. And I put it on the Learn English groups as well as to sort of, you know, get the word around sort of thing. I thought it might be useful to you to see someone else other than the BBC and how, how I talk. Because, you know, if you was ever to come to the UK, England, wherever you go, you will find we talk in many, many different ways. Whereas on the BBC, if you're watching the BBC News which are, or BBC World, they talk in a certain way. And there's more than that, you know, a little bit like going to China. People say, I want to learn Chinese. Well, what sort of Chinese do you want to learn? Do you want to learn Mandarin? North, South, East, West, which Chinese do you want? There's so many different Chineses. Is that Chineses? <laughs> Does that sound right? Chinese. There's so many different forms of Chinese. Well, there's only really one form of English, but we all talk differently. Some are really posh, like the Victoria Derbyshire Victim Show. That's Victoria Derbyshire. She does a show in the morning. Uh, she's very good. She's very posh. Um, but it's always some terrible story about someone being abused or someone not getting their rights or something like that. And it's all a bit victim. You know, victim, which victim, and then the, and, and then it cuts to the to the to the to the three people sitting on chairs who are all victims of some sort of of thing. It could be anything, you know. Victims, uh, I don't know, you know. I, uh, you know, we're not allowed in Waitrose anymore because we're too common. Something like that it'll be, and there'll be a whole show on that, and it's all got a bit too much, so I don't bother watching that anymore. Um, good morning to Kevin Bell. Good morning, Kevin. Uh, not too early. No, I wasn't early this morning. This is certainly not the earliest we've done. I could have been here this morning at half past eight in the morning. I tell you that now with the time I woke up. Far, far too early. Far, far too early. Good morning to Ford D D D Ford D Ford T D C I Power. Guten Morgen, Chris. Im Winder von der English Learning Group. Hello. I hope I said that all right. Now, I'm going to think that that's Dutch or German. I'll go with Dutch. Are you Dutch? I'm guessing there. I can't speak Dutch. But, you know, sometimes you can look at a phrase and think, mm, yeah, that's Dutch. That's Russian. You can see the, the Russian. They're very um, obvious, aren't they? Russian letters. They kind of go backwards, don't they? I don't, I don't think they write right to left. What's right to left? That's Hebrew, isn't it? Right to left. I think some of the countries are right to left. Hebrew is... Um, is that Jewish? Hebrew, I think, is Jewish. That's right to left. Kevin's been catching us around 6am so many times. Uh, you do need to get up earlier. Well, not necessarily. I, I never know what time I'm going to do the show, to be honest, Kevin. It's as and when, as you well know. All right? As and when. Uh, so I've uh, come off some of the Facebook groups. Because I found an easier way of sharing the show. If I can show you one here on my um, uh, little uh, iPad things. Uh, uh, it's actually a bit too bright. There's a share button here. And if I do share it in groups, it then lists all the groups I'm on. Well, obviously, there's a lot of groups there that are nothing to do with the show. And I wouldn't want to put this on there. Because if you put it on groups that would not be interested, they get a little bit upset. They get a little bit upset on there. So I don't want to do that. So it goes on the Facebook, some Facebook live groups and learn English groups. And there's about, I think it's about 12, 13 or 14 of them all together. So while you're seeing that opening video, I'm here doing share, share, share. And then usually by about halfway through that video, I've finished. And then I'm sitting here waiting to have a chat to you. So I've started deleting some of the Facebook groups because they're just, just in the way. You know, you can't be, oh, not that one, not that one, not one. And it just becomes a bit too complicated. So I'm streamlining my uh, Facebook groups there, OK? Um, Ford Power says, Itchcom or Deutsch Deutschland? German, then. Deutschland is Germany, I think. Can you can you do it in English at all? I don't know if you can do it in English. And I think he's trying to learn English as well. So if this does help you learn English, then all well and good. I thought it might be a good idea. Um Let's have a look here. I've got a few stories to do. Now, are you a crisp lover? Are you a crisp lover? Now, I love crisps. I have not had a single crisp has passed my lips since I joined Slimming World in June. Okay? I loved Walker's cheese and onion crisps. 
I've got to be honest, I, th I have a feeling if I was to open a bag now, I would find them incredibly salty and incredibly greasy. I remember eating crisps in the car on the way home and, you know, you'd have your bag in between your two legs on the front seat or whatever on the side. Like that. And afterwards, your, your fingers would be so greasy, wouldn't they, after a bag of crisps? Don't you find? Well, remember... That's just the, just the little bit on your fingers. What about all that grease that you've just shoved in your mouth and is forever expanding those hips of yours? Yes. It says, in the sun this morning, crisps and biscuits will lose their golden colour, boys and girls. This is very worrying. Will lose... Let's just uh, move... I, I was aware yesterday, actually, when I watched back some of the show, I noticed when I talk to you on here the volume drops down, and that's because I'm moving away from my little microphone. Maybe I should have a second microphone in there, I don't know, and set it up. So I will try and move it round a little bit more towards my mouth in future, okay, so we don't get the volume drop. Uh, crisps and biscuits will lose their golden colour when manufacturers are forced to reduce a chemical that may cause, cause cancer. The treats, crisps and biscuits, will become paler from April when the at acrylamide ingredient is slashed. Um, snacks will be baked at a lower temperature for longer, causing them to lighten. I don't think anyone's going to notice this really, are they? Will you notice that your crisps are a little bit lighter? It doesn't make any difference, does it? Biscuits and crisps made by Foxes, Marks and Spencers and other big brands contain raised levels of acrylamide, the Daily Telegraph reports. It forms when potatoes and grains are cooked above 120 degrees centigrade. What is that? What's that in Fahrenheit? We don't understand centigrade in this country, dear. It's foreign. What does that mean, centigrade? <laughs> um, it's also found in coffee, some baby food and bread. The chemical has been identified by the World Health Organization as a cancer risk. This is in this morning's sun. Manufacturers who fail to make efforts to reduce it could be fined thousands of pounds. Food Standard Agency tested uh, Food Standards Agency testing showed Marks and Spencer's cranberry and raspberry bif breakfast biscuits contain over three times the FSA's in indicative levels. That's quite a lot, isn't it? Really, pubs and restaurants are being told to tackle the problem in a range of food. Uh, Dr. Lisa Ackley, food safety advisor at the British Hospitality Association said companies are making good progress on acrylamide already. So, you know, I don't think people are going to notice that really, are they? You know, the fact that, 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 that your crisps and that have gone a little bit paler. Would, would you notice that? I mean, half the time we don't even look in the bag, do we? Huh? I bet you don't even look in the bag when you're having a bag of crisps, do you? You just shove your hand in, <laughs> shove them in your mouth like that. It's like these people that buy, I mean, Happy Shopper Custard, for example. Happy Shopper Custard. I'm sure that's full of all sorts of chemicals. <laughs> and yet, well, at least yellow colouring. God knows. Do you know what? Happy Shopper Custard. There are pubs I know that pretend to make their own custard. When you go out the back and you see a tin of Happy Shopper Custard, it's absolutely shocking. It really is. Brendan likes the kettle crisps, the crunchy ones, hand-cooked. Oh, delicious, Brendy. Uh, Brendan. Oh, they really are. I haven't had a bag of those for over a year. Can you believe that? Phone number if you want to call in about any of this, 0208-144-3477, 0208-144-3477. Skype in, United Kingdom Talk, okay? Um... Yeah, Kevin loves crisps. I think we all do, really. We do love crisps. I'm, I'm having a pizza later. I allow myself one treat a week. I'm having a pizza later. I'm meeting up with my friend Wayne, who lives uh, in Canonbury, which is um, uh, like uh, 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 just near Black... I think it's Blackfriars. It's either London Bridge or Blackfriars Bridge. I can't remember. I've been to his place a few times. He works at the Skinner's Halls in London and he, he's got a, a his, his flat is kind of on, on top of it and he, he can actually see St Paul's Cathedral from his balcony yeah <laughs> while looking at the roofs and all the air conditioning on people's roofs he's got a lovely place actually so I'm going meeting him uh, up for a pizza a little bit later on our, our, our last meet up 
before um, Christmas. So I'm looking forward to that today. Uh, today, I've, I'm going down the dump. I've been doing a little bit of a clear out, as you well know. I'm doing a little clearing out at, at the moment. My house, Facebook groups, things like that. I haven't finished yet. What I've done, I've gone onto Facebook and I'm removing 10 groups every time I come on the computer. So I, I'm, I, I'll get there eventually. I look at that. Not, not that one, not that one, not that one. Because they're just basically getting in the way. And people seem to be able to add you to groups, don't they, without you even asking to be added to them. I find it very annoying, you know, sort of added to the group, I don't know, houses that have been painted green. And so how did I get to be a member of that? <laughs> very strange and mysterious. That's what it is. Strange and mysterious. Um, I had my pills early this morning, about 15 minutes early. That's okay. I take pills every morning. A lot of people of an age take pills for different things. I've got a little thing. So I have, I had my pills early in the morning. It's very, very important to have them on time. I'm surprised the amount of people I know who are taking pills for various different uh, things, some diseases, some heart things, I don't know, this, that and the other. And they're not bothered. They didn't seem to be bothered the fact that they missed them two hours ago. The doctor said you take them twice a day at the same time. So 10 o'clock means 10 o'clock. It doesn't mean 12 o'clock. It doesn't mean 8 o'clock. Maybe 15 minutes either way. So this morning, I had my uh, pills run about a quarter to. And it's, I think it's important to have your pills, whatever you're taking them for. And uh, I, I don't know. I, I think it's the older you get, the more you have to take. Take Ray Reynolds, for example. Now, today is Ray Reynolds' birthday, and he is 70 years old today. I always do the birthdays at the end of the show, okay, and I will be doing that. But as, as this is part of what we're talking about, Ray Reynolds today is 70 years old, and he now has to take so many pills. He has to get up at 4 o'clock in the morning, and he starts taking them about 4 o'clock in the morning, you know, uh, and uh, finishes around about 9 o'clock. Takes him five hours every day to take all his pills because they're all different. You've got to read the instructions and you must, you know, for drugs and that to do their job, you've got to take them as it says on the blooming box or on, you know, as the doctor told you. If it says take pills with food, then <laughs> I know it sounds stupid, but you really ought to say something uh, to, 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 to have something to eat. Oh, so, so Ray, you know, I think the first pills he takes are at four o'clock in the morning, which is with food. So he does himself a piece of toast, eats that, you know, and has some pills. The next pills are without pill, without, 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 without food. So he waits 20 minutes and then he has those. Then he has some more with food and then without, with, 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 with you know, with water. And he says to me, he says to me, the pills at nine o'clock, I'm sure the doctor said to me, he says to me, he said, you have to have it with gin and tonic. So he starts on the old gin and tonic about nine o'clock in the morning. Ray Reynolds. And he finished taking his pills. He takes them between 4 a.m. and 9 a.m. nonstop. 200 pills Ray Reynolds has to take at 70 years old. And it just gets worse and worse. Every other week he's at the doctor. He gives him another bottle of pills. How do you do it, Ray? Have you got one of those certificates so that you don't have to pay for your prescriptions? Oh, no, sorry, you're over 65, so you don't have... Do pensioners get prescriptions free of charge? Don't know if they do or not, do they? Just think, in 10 years' time, I will be a state... Oh, no, it's, I think it's 68 now, isn't it? 13 years' time, I will be a state pensioner. <laughs> Lucky to get here. Lucky to get to that age, dear. Shocking. Good morning, Tony Power. Ray says, happy birthday today to Sir Winston Churchill. Mark Twain, Gary Lineker. All oh, those Walker's crisps, Gary. How comes Gary Lineker can eat all those crisps and don't look fat? Why is that? <laughs> Billy Idol, hot inner city. Dick Clark of American Bandstand. Oh, yeah, I remember that one. Ben Stiller, Lorraine Kelly, John Bishop, Alan Sherman, Norm Jonathan Swift, Jax... Chirac, Frank, oh, look at all these ones he does there. Norman Scott as well. Why have you got Norman Scott on there? Surely it's not his. Tony Powers already getting free prescriptions. You're not. Are you 65, Tony? You're not 65, surely. I always remember, I, I seem to remember when I was in my 20s. I think I met you when I was in my 20s, didn't I? 
And I remember you telling me your age then, and I thought, well, you can't be that age. It could be. What? Well, how old are you now, Tony? Do let us know, all right? Uh, good morning on Periscope to Asersis. Asersis, I think I've got that right. And Pharaoh as well says, Katidi. Good morning to you. Uh, if you're on Periscope, let us know where you are, what country you're in, because I think you join us from many different countries. I see an, uh, a lot of languages uh, people try and talk to me to the uh, people who are watching on Periscope. Uh, Juan is there as well. Good morning, Juan. I, but I don't know what countries you're in. I don't have like a little map that comes up or anything like that. OK, so do let us know. Uh, oh, 60. You get them at 60, do you, Tony? Is that for everyone? I didn't know that. Three prescriptions from 60 years old. Oh, well, I've only got to get five more of those um, annual certificates. Mine's up for renewal now. I think it's about 130 quid for the um, NHS prescription prepayment certificate, isn't it? Something like that. Good. I uh, was watching a programme on the... I was watching the news this morning, BBC Business Live, which I quite like. I haven't seen the bloke on there recently, the one who throws his arms all over the place and is really loud. Now, I personally don't know anyone like that, you know, who's really loud and throws their arms all over the place while they're talking. But this bloke's on there. He hasn't been on there for a while. Uh, but we're talking about British Telecom and uh, Open Reach, which I think is the BT department that looks after the Internet. And they found a use for, they use drones now, okay, to install wires. And what they do, so, so if they've got an awkward piece of wire to run across the country, perhaps over a river or um, over a piece of difficult terrain, perhaps uh, there's a load of trees in the way or something like that. What they knew that now do is they get a piece of fishing line. So they, they unravel it first, you know, and they lay out. If, if you've got to do this, you've got to, you can't, you can't have it on the, like the reel because that's not going to work. The drone's not going to pull it out. So just a small drone, which you, you, know, you buy in a toy shop or somewhere like that. They tie a piece of fishing wire to it and they, they set it out on the ground like that, you know, so it can be picked up easily. And then off goes the drone. It flies over whatever the difficult terrain is, perhaps a river flies over the river, gets to the other end, and they put it down. And then so they've got the bit of fishing wire, and then at the other end, which is still at the uh, originating place of departure for the drone, they then tie a piece of wire to it and then pull it across, because fishing wire is very, very... I say wire, it's it's a plastic stuff, isn't it? Fishing, li it's fishing line, I beg your pardon, fishing line. Fishing line is very strong, and that's how they're using drones. Isn't that fantastic? Well, why didn't someone think of that quickly? Well, someone obviously did because they're doing it now. I think it's excellent. What an excellent use for drones. And, of course, over trees, something like that. You can fly your drone over the tree like that, get to the other side, and then just uh, just drop it down and, and the wire will go down with it. And you just pull it across. Pull it across like that. It won't pick up a wire because, obviously, that's heavy. You couldn't do it direct with the wire. A little bit like... Um, uh, pulling wires through through a hole you know often you've got to have something there first push that through and then attach the wire to the other end and pull it through what an excellent idea for a drone that got me to thinking to ask you a question what other unusual ways can be thought or to use a drone for any ideas what else could we use drones for something Perhaps no one else or, or perhaps that I don't know. What else are they using drones for? Obviously for army things, uh, investigating things, you know, little cameras on there and all that. But what else could you use a drone for? Any idea? Stick a message there and I'll read it out. Or call in 0208 144 All right. Tony says uh, he's also getting free travel in London on the Oyster card. So, yes, uh, in the US, a lot of basic prescriptions are free. I didn't know that. Certain blood pressures, antibiotics and creams. Uh, I, I have a, I don't use it much anymore at all. I've got an asthma thing and uh, that's not free. I have to pay for that one. But the, my, my, the pills I have are free. Um, uh, bum cream is free for hemorrhoids. <laughs> is it really? <laughs> I used to work for British Telecom. I was a telephone engineer. Good morning, Asus. Good morning to you. Um, 
and that was a lovely job actually uh i went into british telecom as a as, a, as an operator but i wanted to be an engineer but I didn't have the qualifications, so I went in as an operator and transferred across after a couple of years. It was like, you know, you get in a company and then you could do anything you wanted to. it. And um, being an engineer, that was a wonderful job, that was. It really was. I used to climb up and down telegraph poles. I'd sit at the top of the pole, lean back and with the screwdriver and stripping wires and putting them in little holes and things like that, going into cust 